Hey guys, welcome back to the Janus Project. We are continuing our series on abortion here. And specifically, we're not trying to get into the science, we're not trying to get into the, the uh, bioethics of any of this. What we're simply doing is we're trying to take a look at the most commonly used verses that you will have thrown at you if you're talking to an atheist or a skeptic where they're trying to use the Bible to prove that God isn't pro-life. Basis number one, God has the authority to take life. That is what we built up uh, quite a few episodes ago. Remember that because that's going to come into play today. Second basis is the one that we covered last episode. Last episode, what we did is for the children of Israel, God said, if you obey me, here's the blessings. If you disobey me, here are the curses. What I didn't get into in that video, but is really important to note, if you go right before that whole curse segment, what it does is it actually almost repeats everything on the curses, but on the blessing side. So it's like, blessed will you be in the field, and blessed will you be in the city, and blessed will be the fruit of your womb. And if you ignore God, cursed will you be in the field, and cursed will you be in the city, and cursed will be the, you know. So what he does is he, he juxtaposes blessings and cursings. Understand that. That is what God is doing. So God has the authority to do whatever he wants. He's God. He can take life, give life, sustain life, cut life short, whatever. That is God's purview, God's authority. The reason we have such a problem with it is because we are not allowed to play God. But people get really upset when God plays God. Again, they're hypocrites. Second thing, when you obey God and do things his way, he blesses you. When you disobey, he curses you. And that brings us to this passage right here. Now, as we get into this passage, this is going to bring us to principle number three. The Bible is allowed to describe things without saying whether they're right or wrong. God can describe a punishment or describe an event or tell you what happened. That's not him saying whether it's okay or not. In fact, a lot of times the Bible is going to describe things that are wrong in order to leave them for an example. All right, we're continuing here. The caption uh, on this skeptic's Bible thing uh, is the idea of God will open pregnant mothers to be. Sure. 2 Kings 8.12. Take a look at it. 2 Kings 8.12, uh, specifically, Elisha is talking to a, a guy by the name of Hazael, and uh, we're going to hop back to verse 7 to get kind of a running start. It says, And Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, was sick, and it was told him, saying, The man of God has come hither. And the king said unto Hazael, Take a present in thy hand, and go and meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord, and say, Shall I recover from this disease? So Hazael went to meet him. So this is a servant of the king. So Hazael went to meet him, the prophet. And look what it says. And he took a present of him, even of every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden, and came and stood before him and said, Thy son Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, hath sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? And Elisha said unto them, Go thy way, go say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover, how, how, how be it, the Lord has showed me that thou shalt surely die. So he's basically saying, hey, you can tell him he, he could recover, but God has shown that, that you, you, you're going to die of this. And he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed. So, so Elisha the prophet is sitting there, and he's, he's saying, you would have recovered. You would have recovered of this sickness, but God has shown me you're going to die. And then he's, he's trying to compose himself, and the servant's going, what? what's going on and it says and he was ashamed and the man of god wept and hazael said why weepest thou my lord and he answered he said because i know the evil thou wilt do unto the children of israel so so elisha is is a prophet he knows what's coming and he says hazael i know the evil that you are going to do to my people so so you're coming with a gift you're coming on behalf of your king and, and you're okay right now, but I know the evil that you're going to bring. And look what he says. I know the evil that you will bring unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds will you set on fire. You're going to slay their young men with the sword, and you will dash their children. So you're going to take these little kids, and you're going to smash them against the rocks till they die. And you're going to rip up their women that are pregnant with child. And so, so, so Elisha is sitting there looking at this man going, your king would recover from this sickness, but I know, I know he's not going to. And I also know what you're going to do. And I know the evil you're going to bring on the children of Israel. Now, again, this goes back to the curse because God said, if you ignore me, these are the curses that are going to go upon you. And, and the children of Israel have been ignoring God. That's what they've been doing. And Hazael said, what, is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, the Lord hath showed me that thou shalt be king over Syria. 
And so Hazael, he, departed from Elisha, and when he came to his master, who said unto him, What said Elisha to thee? And he answered, He told me that thou shouldest surely recover. And it came to pass on the morrow that he took a thick cloth, and he dipped it in the water, and he spread it on his face so that he died, and Hazael reigned in his stead. So Hazael knows that he's going to be a king, and he chooses to take matters into his own hands, and he chooses to assassinate his king and take control of Syria. And Elisha prophesies this and says, I know exactly what you're going to do when you take over. I know your, your king would have recovered from this sickness, but I also know that you're going to murder him, and you're going to take the throne. And when you take the throne, I know that you are going to slaughter God's people and you're going to throw the children on rocks and kill them and you're going to rip open pregnant women. And God basically said, you're going to basically fulfill the prophecy that I told them would happen in Deuteronomy if they turned from me. But they turned from me. And so this is what's going to happen. So to say that God is going to rip up, I'm sorry, unless you think God's name is Hazael, you're misreading the Bible. God is allowing this to happen. Uh, you could even say God is pushing this man to come punish his people. But God is not doing this. And even if God were, again, rule number one, God has the authority to do this because he's God. He has the authority to take and give life. He tells you, in these parameters, you are allowed to take life. I don't know why this is so hard. I don't know why this is something that can't be grasped. You look at God and say, God is so brutal because he had the children of Israel roll into Canaan and slaughter all these wicked people. And he involved killing women and children. And you look at that and say, God is so brutal. But then you look at this abortion doctor and you don't say, that's brutal. That's an inconsistency. And you need to understand that God has the authority to give and take life. God has the authority to bless and curse. And God can describe things in the Bible without putting his stamp of approval on those actions. He's obviously not okay with murder, but he's going to describe what these people are doing. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this series. Continue to tune in. We've got a few more passages we're going to work through. If you have other passages, please put them in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking, and uh, we will continue working our way through these passages here on the Janus Project.